Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Welcome to all of you sitting at home watching on this Easter Sunday. We have a joyous celebration planned for you, and we hope that you are enjoying and, and appreciating and able to fully participate in these worship services that we film for you. We are uh, very glad that you are with us, and we are very glad that we are reaching folks that we have not reached in a long time. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He has risen indeed! Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is Jeremiah 31, 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit, for there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Psalm 118, 1 through 2, 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second lesson is from Acts 
10, 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that believe that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must be raised from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been, at one at his head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O 
Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Let us pray. Gracious God, we are comforted in our sorrows as we witness the stone being rolled away from Christ's tomb. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. When we awoke this morning, how many of us first said, again you shall take your tambourines and go forth into do the dance of the merrymakers, as the prophet Jeremiah reported to us that the Lord told him in our first lesson. Were you happy when you arose this morning? How many of us said, as the beautiful psalm of thanksgiving, Psalm 118, reports. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How many of us kissed our loved ones and said, the Lord is risen? And how many heard back, he is risen indeed, alleluia. How many of us even said, happy Easter? I'll wager that most of us did not say any of those things. I'll wager that most of us instead checked our smartphones or our laptops first thing to see how many people died of COVID-19 yesterday, to see if any well-known names or people that we knew have died. This is entirely natural in this time of pandemic, in this time of fear, our fears are natural and warranted. You are watching this sermon safely from home because home is the safest place for you to be. Will it surprise you very much to hear that this Easter, this seemingly bleak Easter, is much more like the original Easter day than what we have come to know Easter to be? Although Jewish Christians continued to celebrate the Passover for many decades after Jesus' resurrection, that celebration did not become a church celebration until sometime in the middle of the second century. And now, of course, Easter has come to be the church's biggest, highest, most joyous festival, a time of incense and fancy vestments a time of remembrance of baptism, a time of joy, joy-filled alleluias all around. And of course, Easter has also gotten all mixed up with lots of pagan and secular festivals that celebrate the arrival of spring. And that, of course, has given us bunnies and green cellophane grass and Easter baskets and Easter eggs. But if we look back to the very first Easter, the day of Jesus' actual resurrection, it is much, much different. In John's Gospel, which we just heard, the disciples returned confused from the empty tomb. And Mary stood outside it weeping, weeping, thinking that his body had been stolen. All of them were grieving. All of them were afraid. Their Lord and teacher, their friend, their mentor had been tortured and murdered. And there was every reason to believe that they might be arrested as well. When the tomb was found empty, did they shout, Alleluia! Christ is risen! They did not. First, there was fear and confusion, and sadness, and grief. There was darkness and suspicion. Luke's gospel reports that the women who found the empty tomb were not even believed. The disciples thought it was nonsense. So there was skepticism and doubt as well, undercutting and contempt for the women's faithful witness. There was mansplaining. 
How must that have felt to them? Did they shout, Alleluia, Christ is risen? They did not. The faithful were hiding in their homes. How many have died, they might well have thought. Much like today. What's even more interesting is that when Mary Magdalene first turned from the angels in the tomb and saw Jesus standing before her, she did not recognize him. This is a theme that is soon repeated on the road to Emmaus. How often do we turn in our sorrow, in our grief, in our fear, in our weeping, or even in our active searching to look for Christ, and we don't recognize him. He's right there, and we don't recognize him. This is when Jesus is most with us, coming to comfort us in our grief, to give us strength, to bear us up, to help us get through whatever dark night has enshrouded us. And yet, we often fail to recognize him. Today, if we're not careful, Easter, Jesus' actual resurrection, can take on a generalized kind of warm, fuzzy form. Although we observe Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, and many of us observe Easter Vigil, we often compartmentalize those, each to its appointed day. Preparation day, that's for agape meals and foot washing and altar stripping. Crucifixion day, that's for reading the passion and reverencing the cross. Easter vigil, that's for chanting and reading the crucial faith narratives of our history. And we carefully reserve Easter for the Alleluia's. It's the He is Risen Day. And we forget that all of it is Easter. All of it is Easter. Jesus crucified, Jesus crucified is crucial to Jesus resurrected. We forget that the first Easter was a time of grief and confusion and fear and contempt for faithful witness. And it was a time of inability to recognize Jesus when they saw him. We forget that the day of resurrection was an awful lot like today. Before there can be a return to normal, there has to be a diversion from normal, a deviation from normal. Before there can be resurrection, there has to be death. Before there can be the joy of Easter, there has to be the despair of Good Friday. If we recognize Jesus when he comes to us in our despair, our joy will be more joyous because it has conquered our despair. And in conquering sorrow, it fulfills the hope that comes with our faith. Let us, in this time of pandemic, put our fear in perspective. It is part of the process of resurrection, and it may be a long process. This seemingly bleak Easter, with no gatherings, no procession, no family dinner, no Easter eggs or baskets, no bunnies, and maybe only a furtive communion in the parking lot. This Easter is a gift to us. It is a gift because it gives us the opportunity to experience Easter as it was, as well as how it has become. And by this bleak experience, we can reclaim the fullness of Christ's fear and agony and despair and death and ultimate resurrection as one event, not several events, one event. And receiving this gift, let us focus our hearts and minds like a laser beam 
on recognizing Jesus when he comes to us, as he will. Alleluia! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! Amen. This is the time in our service where I would normally ask to receive your gifts in the offering. We give thanks today that so many of you have been sending your offerings for our, con our expenses do continue during this time and our homeless ministry also continues. So we very much appreciate that you are thinking of us. If uh, you have not sent your offerings or would like to continue to send your offerings, the information is as follows. We are at 997 East Walnut Street, Pasadena, California, 91106. You may also go to our website and go to the online giving portion. The website is at www.trinitypasadena.org. Thank you.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. In this time when human activity has stilled, we hear and blend our voices in the song. We pray for the healing of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict as they struggle to respond to the pandemic. Leaders set their mind on fear and greed, boastfulness and arrogance, rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace and unity and lead them to cooperate in the pursuit of solutions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, from the very beginning, you gave the church the gift of women as your witnesses, as preachers, teachers, and leaders. Help us to believe their faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, the dying, assuring them of your loving presence in this time of terrible sickness. Especially today, we pray for Sharon, Ed, Julie, Lisa, Bailey, Jamie, Dan, Leroy, the Tappengott family, and the friends and family of Eleanor Erskine. Lord, in your mercy, Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders and filming assistants this day, especially Nancy, Jacob, Maureen, Ian, Megan, and Francis. Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace virtually at home and with whomever you can reach. The Lord's peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.